I recently showed you how you could scaffold an entire .NET API backend all using Entity Framework, Visual Studio, and any database that you want with just a few button clicks. And today I'm gonna to show you how you can generate an entire Blazor application with full CRUD operations in seconds. So tune in. Hey everyone, I'm James and I'm back this time talking about how you can scaffold out an entire Blazor web application in seconds with the latest Visual Studio 2022. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, I have the latest version of Visual Studio 2022 over here and I'm gonna say new project. And under here, I can select Blazor or just type in Blazor if you want and I'm gonna select the Blazor web app. Now this is gonna give me all of my options over here for my version of .NET, authentication, HTTPS. Now here, I'm gonna go ahead and select interactive render mode here, and I'm gonna say server. You could optionally say server or auto or web assembly. For this demo, I'm just gonna say server. And let's just go ahead and do global interaction type. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm gonna create a Blazor application that has interactive components globally everywhere on top of here. Of course, I could go ahead and mark each individual page if I want it as server or um, um, a web assembly or wherever I want. And we are gonna include the sample pages just because I like how it all looks. So I'm gonna hit create here. So this will give me everything I want and the Blazor application will be a file new Blazor application. Okay, cool. So this is a standard Blazor application. I have layouts in here, I have pages, things that you'd expect. If I run the application, you're gonna know if you've ever created a Blazor application exactly what you're gonna get, which is a Blazor app, which has a home screen on it a weather display and also a counter here so this is going to give me everything that i need all right so let me pull my application over and sure enough here's my blazer app counter weather it is far zoomed in so let's go ahead and make it a little bit bigger there we go all the standard blazer stuff all right that's fine but let's go ahead and add something in here so i'm going to go in and i'm going to add a new folder and i'm just going to call this uh, model and let's go ahead and add a model. So this is my, po my POCO, like my simple data object class. So here I'm gonna go ahead and say class, I'm gonna say monkey. Now we've created lots and lots of monkey applications over here, so I'm gonna paste in our standard monkey data. Our monkey has a name, a location, details, image, population, latitude, longitude, and an integer for the ID. So there we go, we're totally good to go. Now let's say I wanted to create a page for this. Well, I'd go into the pages, I would say add, I would create a new item, add a new page, add components, controllers, all this stuff. But inside the latest version of Visual Studio 2022, you can say new scaffolded item. And I showed this before when we were scaffolding APIs. Now under Razor Components, you can scaffold Razor Components using Entity Framework. And you can see the ID is the Blazor CRUD Scaffolder. That gives you an idea of what it is. So I'm going to hit add here. And this is gonna bring up a very familiar window that you might be used to because I showed it in the API video. Here you can select a template, this is kind of cool. So if you want just a single page to list those monkeys, create the monkeys, edit the monkeys, do delete details, everything there, or you can just say CRUD, and this will give you all of them combined. Now I'm just gonna go in and select my model. So I'm gonna select that monkey. And here, this is specifically gonna look for an entity framework DB context. So here I'm gonna go ahead and select well, nothing, I don't have one, so let's go ahead and create one. There we go, just tap on that, and we'll set add. Here I can select the database provider, so I could connect to a SQL Server, a SQLite, Postgres, Azure Cosmos DB. Now this here only works in the server mode because this is going to be on the server there. Now you could configure this if you want later on in different configurations, uh, but here, since I'm on the server and I'm gonna put in this Entity Framework connection stuff, it's all gonna work great because it's happening on the server. So this is now gonna bring in some NuGet packages, scaffold everything out for us in just a few seconds. So let's go ahead and let it do that. Okay, awesome, quite a few things happen. First and foremost, under pages, we're gonna see monkey pages, and we have create, delete, details, edit, index. Inside of my program, I can also see that the SQLite configuration has been added for me. We can also note that the quick grid has been added as well, which is really, really cool. So what this means, if I tap on the index, this is using the brand new quick grid that was introduced in .NET 8. 
This will automatically find all of the properties for that monkey class and give me three different buttons to edit, go to details or click on delete. And we can of course go into each of them and see when I go and create, we have an edit form, data validators and everything inside of here for all of the different items of that monkey. There's also logic that will automatically talk to that database and do navigation as well. Here we can have delete so we can see the same exact thing. We get some details. We have a button that says delete. When it's clicked, it will go and call that delete method and handle it for me. So all of these things are going off and handling all the code for me automatically, which is super duper cool. So there we go. Here's the edit. It does everything. It's an edit form, it has the form name, everything that you would possibly want, which is super duper neat. Now we have to do a few other things like actually create our database with entity framework. So I'm going to tap on this connected service and we can see that there's a SQLite local connection here. So I'm going to hit add migration. And this is the same exact thing that we did when we scaffolded out our API. There I was using Azure SQL and SQL server. I'm going to use SQLite, whatever your database is. We first need to go ahead and add a migration and then update the database. So this tooling will go ahead and find information inside of my project to help me out. All right, I found my DB contacts. I'm going to say finish, and this is going to run a simple EF migration command line argument. Basically, it's going to add that migration for me, which only takes a few seconds. All right. Now, after the migration has taken place, I'm going to click again. And I'm going to say update database. So I have to not only have the migration in place, I need to apply it. So this way the SQLite database knows about my monkey and everything I'm about to store in it. All right. I found my information. I'm going to hit finish, and this is going to apply that update to the database just like we did previously and like we did in the API as well. All right. Now the final thing I need to do is actually go into the nav menu and add a new navigation item for our monkey. So I'm just going to go ahead and tap on that. And here we're going to say monkeys, and then I'm going to say monkeys for the href. Now I know that it's monkeys because if I go to the index, so we can scroll to the top and see that is the route that's there. Now all we have to do is compile up and run our brand new full application with CRUD operations. All right, our application is up and running and we of course have our counter, our weather and our monkeys. So here we can see that we have nothing but the quick grid is in place with all of the different details. I can select create new and I have a full form scaffolded out for me. So I'm going to say um, baboon, I'm going to say near me, <laughs> there we go. And I'll just say details and image and population, I don't know, 1000. And we can see that this entire form is getting validated for me. And we can even note that right here, we have the correct combo boxes and number boxer pickers for me automatically. And I can hit create. It'll navigate me back all the way to my index. And we have the baboon. It's near me, has the details, the image, everything like that. I can add another one. I'll say, um, um, uh, Mooch, who is our monkey location, uh, super close by. And then we'll say, cute and image and just population one and latitude longitude hit create and there we go we have our um, monkeys coming in of course i could i can customize this however i want but i can go ahead and edit that so i'll say baboon with some exclamation points hit save it's updated automatically for me i can click on details everything is there for me navigate back to the list and then hit delete if I want to, and I get a delete option here as well. I can, of course, add more information, more context, or change anything right there. But in just a few clicks inside of Visual Studio, I not only have added a full SQLite database or any other type of database that you want there, but I've also scaffolded out all of these pages. All right, what do you think? With just a few button clicks, you're scaffolding out an entire Blazor application. I will put a link to the detailed blog and to any additional documentation that talks about how this implementation works and any limitations such as the server things that you need to worry about when you're building this out. I found this super duper awesome because I am building a lot of applications all the time and just scaffolding out those base type of forms enables me to get up and running super quick, which I really, really appreciate it. Let me know what you think in the comments below and anything else you want to see. That's I'll maybe try to take that back over to the Blazor and Visual Studio team and let them know. All right, well, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, 
hit that like button down there. It super helps out the channel. And don't forget to jam on that subscribe button where I put out new videos right here on my channel, hopefully nearly every single week. So until next time, thanks for watching.